All right, in this video, we're gonna look at what force of gravity a 60 kilogram person would have as they pass the Kármán line, 100 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. So, it's, if this is the radius of the Earth, 6,371 kilometers, then the Kármán line is defined as 100 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, so it's another 100 kilometers out here. And some people sort of would say this is where space starts and you're no longer on Earth, and I think what we're going to see in this problem is that there's still a lot of gravity acting on you at that point. It's defined as space because the atmosphere is getting so thin at this point that there's very little atmosphere. But what we're going to see is we're still pretty close to the Earth, and so we're still going to get a significant force of gravity from us working on it. Let's keep in mind that if this person was sitting on the surface of the Earth, the 60 kilogram person, would multiply it by the gravitational field strength of the Earth, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and would have a force of gravity of 588 newtons. And I'm just doing magnitude here. So let's use universal gravitation to determine how much um, gravity they'll experience at that Kármán line. So the force of gravity is equal to the universal gravitation times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the person divided by the radius. And that radius is for, the, for where the person is to the center of the Earth. So it's this total distance here. So 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newton, uh, newton meters squared per kilogram squared is the universal gravitational constant. Mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And the mass of the person is 60 kilograms. The radius of the Earth and the person together, remember this is 100 kilometers, so we would 6371 kilometers. Actually, I'll do this over here 6,371 kilometers plus 100 kilometers is going to set us up to 6,471 kilometers. Keeping in mind that we can't be putting numbers into our equation in kilometers, we should convert this to meters. By multiplying for the fact that there's a thousand meters in every one kilometer. And then with that in hand we would get 6.471 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 meters. So 6.471 times 10 to the 6 meters. Don't forget that the radius in the bottom there is squared. So the force of gravity on this person is still 571.5 newtons. So going that far away from the Earth didn't drop our force of gravity all that significantly. Maybe it's a 10% decrease or something like that. And that's interesting because, you know, the International Space Station, these things, they're not up that far. So it sort of leads us to the obvious question, why don't they experience more force of gravity up there than... Um, than we observe when we watch videos of people on the International Space Station and stuff like that. The answer to that question is that you have to remember that the International Space Station itself is an object that's undergoing circular motion around the Earth, it's orbiting the Earth very fast. And so the force of gravity that you and the space station experience as it's making that orbit is all being used up just to keep you in orbit. So there's none of it left to, for you to feel weightful on the actual space station. So it's one of these accelerated frame of reference issues where because the object that you're on is in free fall in its orbit, which means the acceleration that it experiences due to the force of gravity is doing everything it can do to just keep it in orbit, when you compare yourself to your surroundings, the International Space Station, there's no force of gravity left for you to feel like you are being pulled down towards the bottom of the space station. 
And so since gravity is doing everything that it can do to just make you keep up with your surroundings, there's no gravity left for you to really experience or for you to really feel when you're on the International Space Station. So even at significant distances from the Earth, we still have significant forces of gravity, but I guess if we get going fast enough to be in orbital rotation, the acceleration of our frame of reference, the International Space Station, for example, is extreme enough that, at least to us, it appears like we're weightless, even though we're not weightless, right? Otherwise, if we were truly weightless, we would just float away from the Earth as opposed to continuing to orbit it.